Welcome back to Advanced Lessons in Millennial Money. I'm your host, Alexandra Gonzalez. Have you ever felt like there's just not enough time in a day and when you really boil it down, you don't even know where that time went? Well, sometimes it's taking care of the kids, going to your job, even schoolwork, or staying on the couch, watching Netflix, and going through your Instagram. And so I really want you to be mindful on what's keeping you busy from truly accomplishing your goals. And so today, Robert and Kim go through their entire journey of entrepreneurship, and they really highlight what keeps them staying busy. Kim and I have been married for like 30 something years now, but we started off with nothing. You know, people think, well, she married me for my money. That wasn't true, because I was kind of between businesses. I had lost my first, second business. Not only did you not have money, we were like in a lot of debt. 800,000 in debt. debt. Yeah. So she bad didn't marry. Debt. Bad debt, not yeah. good debt. Yeah. <clears throat> well, it was just a learning experience. <laughs> it was a great learning experience, and we paid it all back. Yeah, yeah. And, and like when I hear people talk about crowdfunding and all that, you have no idea what it feels like to pay off your investors when you mm -hmm. screw up. So I was cringe when I hear, oh, we just crowdfunded that. I'm going, well, how are you going to pay them back? Mm -hmm. That's the key. That's yeah. the key. So when I met Kim, you know, I thought she was, a, and she still is the most beautiful woman, wonderful oh, person in my whole oh. life. I couldn't believe it. But I was testing her. You know, is she real or is she fake? Mm -hmm. You were testing me? Of course. <laughs> I wanted to find out where you're, I want to find, you know, like. Okay, like, I guess I was <laughs> testing you too, so I guess it's all even. Well, I had nothing. Period. I mean, you knew it. Well, you, well you, had, you were driving the nice car. You lived on the beach in Honolulu. <laughs> oh, let's see, fake or real? Yeah, and you had no money. I oh, had no expenses on those things. <laughs> Continue. But, but anyway, a lot of our conversation with millennial money is, mm -hmm. again, it's the financial statement, right? Mm -hmm. Income is three. So when I met Kim, I had zero, nothing. I got, I, I put all of my assets into that business and we lost everything. Mm -hmm. So not only did I have nothing, I had 850K <laughs> in investor I owed money. So that's when we met. So I'm starting to fall in love with her, which wasn't hard. But anyway, <laughs> uh, I wanted to test her. And so what was my first gift? I mean, we've been, been together about a month. About a month, yeah. It was not jewelry. It was not a nice dinner out. It was an accounting course. Yeah. Very and what, what, did, what, what did most guys tempt you with? Oh, a, a trip to Outer Island, like to Maui for yeah. the weekend or Kauai for the weekend. And you know what that means, right, Alex? I say that means yeah. one one room, mm -hmm. one one room, not yeah. two rooms, one room. <laughs> one room. That was their gift to me. Yeah, right. <laughs> so I, you know, I, I, I've been like the other slime dogs out there and say, "Hey, Kim, you want to go to Maui?" Which means let's get let's have sex, right? Mm -hmm. That's what it meant. <laughs> but I figured, no, 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 I'm going to change. I'm looking for a different type of woman. Mm -hmm. So I gave. I said, Kim, that's an accounting course. Would you like to take it? And what happened? Yeah, it was really interesting because I'm like an accounting course, and and I actually I vowed when yeah, I left college. And you have college, a business degree. I have a business degree from yeah. from university, and uh, I vowed I would never set foot in a classroom again because I I just couldn't stand what they were teaching me. I couldn't stand my college courses, high school courses, so I went. Mm -hmm. But it was a it was an interactive game. We actually built a lemonade stand. We had different teams. We competed. We had to keep track of our income, expenses. We had to do inventory. We had to sell. Mm -hmm. We had to do all the things a business does. And what that course did, where he was just wanting me to understand assets and liabilities, yeah. what it did is actually it ignited my love of learning again. Okay. So that was actually a fantastic gift. The best gift. I found out I love mm -hmm. to learn. It's so just what I was learning I wasn't interested in before. Interested. So that was in 83. And 84. In 90, 84? Yeah, we met in 84. Yes, I just, just thought I'd mention that. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, but out of that, we built the cash flow game together in 96 mm -hmm. because we had so much fun in learning by games and accounting was boring in school. Accounting was boring and when you talk about real versus fake, the cash flow game was people kept asking us, how did we get out of the rat race? How did we become financially free? And so everything on this game board, almost everything on here are things that we've done. Mm -hmm. So it's a real game based on our real experience. A real way of the, learning. The, the successes and a lot of the failures. Yeah. So again, using this diagram here, when I asked Kim, rather than go to Maui, which would have been an expense, yes. Yes. Okay, I'd rather spend the money here and see if she wants to take an accounting course. Mm -hmm. Again, this is my message to 
anybody, including millennials, is where is your head? Yeah. You know, I know most, uh, most millennials, they want a high paying job. They want to be able to pay the rent, eat and all this stuff. And then you dream of the big house, a nice car and all that. But that's why 99% of Americans are broke because their heads are in the wrong spot. So when I asked Kim if she would take an accounting course, it was just two days, you know, I wanted to see if her head could get into the asset column. That was the difference, wasn't it? Yeah, and, and actually, it didn't happen right at that moment, but it, it's- You it, fell in love with me? <laughs> of course I did, <laughs> of course I did. But this started, this started the journey on investing, this started the, uh, the journey on assets. Mm -hmm. um, but I do remember the moment down the road where just like everybody else, I was focused on the income column, mm -hmm. get a job, get the pay raises, if you're an hourly rate wage, work more hours yeah. or, or raise your hourly wage. So I was always focused here. And then finally, this is after we'd actually bought some investment properties, the, the light finally went on and I'm like, instead of focusing on acquiring income, mm -hmm. what if we focus on just acquiring assets, mm -hmm. that the assets go into the income like column? This. Mm -hmm. So that was a huge shift, shift in my mindset. And once that shift happened for me, I don't think about the income column anymore, I just think about the asset yeah, column. And, and, that's, and that's our game called cash flow. Yep. And so when Kim and I met, we had nothing. It took us 10 years to go from nothing to financially free. Wow. So she was 37 and I was 47. But yep. that's the power of focusing on asset assets column. versus liability. Most people are so busy working for money, so busy trying to pay their bills, and so busy buying liabilities that think are assets. So my first gift to Kim was the counting game to get her head in here, and today we're financially free. You know, that's the whole thing. So everybody can do it. It's a matter of putting your head into the right column. And then for me, it was in 73, I took my first real estate investment course here. I'm free. You know, I lost money, get made money back, but I never, I never got out of the asset. We're column. still, I mean, we're still practicing here every single day. Mm -hmm. I'm working on a new uh, project right now in the asset column. It's going to put a lot of cash flow into the income column because, mm -hmm. again, we're focusing on the asset column, not the income column. Mm -hmm. So and we, we did this thing on silver. So one of the first asset type things we accumulated. Yeah. Was silver. silver, silver bars. So tell it, tell. Um, what was the price of silver back then? It was like buck fifty or yeah, something. Buck, buck fifty to three. To, it was going back yeah. and forth. So um, and today it's sixty. It's, yeah. Oh, wow. So we started acquiring silver bars. Yeah. Because we could afford that. Mm -hmm. We were living in La Jolla, California at the time, and we look good. Yeah. <laughs> so our our extra income, whatever extra cash we had, instead of putting into savings, we put it into buying silver bars. Mm -hmm. And little by little, we stacked them in our little closet in our bedroom, mm -hmm. and it was in the back where the clothes hung over it, so we pushed it back there. And little by little, those stacks grew, yeah. just little by little. And, uh, and the building almost <coughs> fell down because we had so much of it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so then we were looking to buy a personal residence and a personal house. And we were gonna buy in La Jolla, but it was, it was very expensive and not really what we wanted. Mm -hmm. And long story short, we found this beautiful, gorgeous 1930s house in Portland, Oregon. Wish we still had it, huh? Yeah, it was stunning. I mean, leaded glass windows, original tile, wood floors. Oh, it was beautiful. And we had no credit, bad credit, and no money for a down payment. Mm -hmm. And so the, the woman who owned the house was also a real estate broker. And we said, if you can get us financing, we'll pay you full price. And she struggled and she- 200000 $235,000. For our house, it's probably worth six million today. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because the because I always say to you, it's best when markets crash. And the Oregon market had crashed mm -hmm. while California was going up. Mm -hmm. We had a spotted owl thing. There were the environmentalists were trying to stop the loggers from cutting down trees. Mm -hmm. You can't cut down trees, Oregon's economy crashes because they're lumber yeah. lumber. So got this gorgeous multi million dollar house for two hundred thousand bucks. Yeah. So, so this poor woman is trying to get us financing on, on our credit, which is shakier than anything can possibly be. And finally, one day she calls me, Robert's out of town, and she says, we got the financing. We need to fund it tomorrow. And I'm like, what? She goes, we need to fund it tomorrow. I need $23,000 tomorrow. I'm like, 
I don't have 23. I'm like, oh my God, I don't have 23. It's that I'm, we gotta buy this house and how are we gonna do it? Mm -hmm. Well, you I went to my little <laughs> closet, opened it up and there's all these silver bars. So I literally, Alex, I literally put these silver bars in uh, brown grocery bags. There was a precious metals dealer just a couple blocks from our house. Mm -hmm carried these things. I made like five trips, carried all these bars down to the, the precious metals dealer and he cashed them all in and that's how we bought our first property. Wow, so it started to And it was not an asset, that. it was yeah. a liability, but we knew that and mm -hmm. to this day we still buy silver, we still buy gold, yeah. we, oh, still, we still keep that asset column mm -hmm. strong. Wow, and so that was your, your, the first property you guys bought? That was our first liability. Our first house. liability, okay. yeah. yeah. So this is how the first property came about. Mm -hmm. okay, so this is the whole thing here. So we have our big, gorgeous house. I mean, it was gorgeous, beautiful, on the hill, you know, leaded glass. Wow. Geez. So then I said to Kim, I said, okay, Kim, you're pretty good at silver and gold now. Mm -hmm. Let's look at real estate as an asset. And this is the whole thing, fake, busy people. So again, most people are trying to focus on how to make more money here, pay off their bills, and buy a new car or something. Mm -hmm. So at this point here, because the real estate market was so depressed, we, we took our time. And, and rather than sitting at the bar eating chicken wings and drinking beer. Which is always a fun thing to yes, do. Yes, it's <laughs> fun. We were looking for property. Yeah. So we wasted our time. We didn't waste our time. We were busy going from house to house to house to house to house to house. And my, our rule of thumb is you have to look at least 100 properties to find one. So instead of wasting our time eating chicken wings and sitting in the bar, which we like to do, mm -hmm. we spent our time looking for property. Right. So that's so yeah, what happened. It is, and, and, and one point to that is you know you're busy if you're doing the same thing day after day after day after day after, mm -hmm. after not doing anything different. For me, when Robert started explaining what his rich dad taught him about property, for me to go look at property took me out of my comfort zone. Yeah. So the busyness, what I was doing was things that took me out of my comfort zone. So I was learning all the time. If I just kept doing the same thing, like, you know, eating chicken wings, drinking beer every day at the bar, not, nothing's going to change. Yeah. Nothing's going to change. I'm just going to end up the same place I am or worse. So that took me out of my comfort zone. And then we found a little two bedroom, one bath house, you know, right, just blocks from where we lived. Really cute, had a little butterfly, little metal butterfly outside. It was really cute. Um, and that was my very first property. Oh, How much was first it? First investment property? First investment property. Oh. It was, it was $45,000. This is back in 1989. That's incredible. Um, actually, a few years ago, it sold again. Somebody sent it to me and it was, it was like almost 400,000, right? Oh. So 45,000 to 400,000. See, I love market crashes. <laughs> yeah. I just love crashes. <laughs> when everything's on sale, it's yep. wonderful. Go yep. ahead. Um, and so I also had to put down $5,000 and we didn't have it which was the best thing, and this is what I want to say, is that don't let not having money stop you because by not having money, it forced us to get really creative on how to come up with that $5,000, and we did. Yeah. Um, and so I never, we never let the fact, if we see something that we really want, especially in the asset column, we always can figure out a way to get it yeah. if we really want it. So mm -hmm. how, do, how did we get that $5,000? Um, two ways. One is we, had, we got about $2,000. We we looked at everything that we had and um, we had a little bit in savings and we had some silver and mm -hmm. things like that. But the other thing that we did. Our, our, most of our silver had gone into the big house we lived right. in and this little house is right down the street from us yep. in Oregon. Yes, but the other thing we did is we had a business at the time, yeah. um, education business, and so we, Still do. We, had a, we took the database and we said, hey everybody, we've created, we're creating this great new product. We're gonna launch it in this time and if you buy it now, ahead of time, you're gonna get the special price. So we pre-sold the product. Without having without it Without having <laughs> it done. And so that way also we created the product exactly what was needed in terms of quantity. Mm -hmm. So people sent in and we, that's how we funded the rest of the house, the, the down payment. Do it. Yeah, wow, there's incredible. always a way to do it, there's mm -hmm. always a way. So this is the point, how much money did that property make you? Well, uh, monthly it made $25 a month. Okay. Yeah, so it went from yeah. here to here at just $25. Right. Mo most people say, well, that's not enough money. But what increased was our knowledge. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that, that experience lot. made her smarter. Mm -hmm. And really what makes you rich is what's up here, not the property. Yeah. 
So, and that's why people are afraid of failing or say, I, don't, I can't have it or I don't want to do toilets. I don't want some lousy well, I was I was actually looking for a reason to not do this deal. I was looking for, oh, please give me something the so fear. I can say, no, I'm not going to do it because that would have been easier. Yeah. There was going to be this steep learning curve if, if we went through and bought it. Mm -hmm. And it would have been easier, more comfortable not to. Yeah. So I knew that and I'm like, no, I got to got to do this. Her goal was to buy 20 properties in 10 years. Yeah. You see, you always have goals. So goals how long put, did it take you? put you in motion. How yeah. long did it take you to get 20 properties, 10 um, years? Instead of 10 years, it took 18 months because I understood, I, I got the game. And it I understood it. Yeah, and then it accelerates. And the economy was terrible. Yeah, yeah. so that was a big People plus. People were giving away the great real estate. Yeah. And so I hear all this, oh, no, the economy's bad or real estate's bad or that's when it's good. But then what happened, we moved here to Phoenix, and one day, how big was that property you just bought? Which 24 one? hours. Oh, how big is it? I mean, it's a big see, what happens <laughs> is your knowledge increases. Mm -hmm. And if your knowledge increases, the money increases. Mm -hmm. So she bought this property right across, again, we have a big house in Phoenix, mm -hmm. but right across the street was the best investment of your yeah, lifetime. Best performing, right? and to this day, we're now re, we, we're now restructuring it, um, putting in a different type of product, and it went from truly it went from seven million when we bought it to up to about twenty two million today. That's incredible. Free and clear. Mm -hmm. And it's a cash flow property. That's incredible. Yep. So we're going to step it up now to one hundred twenty million. Mm -hmm. Wow. Tax free. Wow. <laughs> yeah. And the, and the key is it doesn't matter, you know, how much we have today. I mean, you, you start with that little two-bedroom, one-bath house or whatever it is for you. That's where you learn the fundamentals. The fundamentals there are the same on every property now. I mean, the formula is the same on every single investment property we have. It's the same formula, whether it's two-bedroom, whether it's 500 units. Mm -hmm. It's the same formula. And are we still in the asset column today? Yes, yeah. That's our rule. Our rule is any... We never leave it. Any dollar that comes into the asset column stays in the asset column. So even if we sell a property, which we don't do often, but if we sell it, we'll then take the proceeds from that sale and buy another property or another asset. Wow. And so yeah. that's how you keep yourselves busy. That's our busy. That's how we're busy. <laughs> by that's our busyness. Finding investments. Yeah. Wow. And always learning and studying. And I'd say if I know anyone who's busy, it's you guys. You all of you, both of you are always traveling, always looking at properties always talk, doing podcasts, videos. I mean, I've never seen you guys not busy. Now, the lesson I have for all young people and all, mm -hmm. we're all equal. We have 24 hours in a day. Yeah. It's what you do with the 24 hours that makes a mm -hmm. difference. And so, you know, the challenge for you guys, you have more distractions. I see young people <laughs> sitting there, I don't know what the heck you got. How can you say so busy on that thing? I don't know. Mm -hmm. But that's why it's millennials, the fake generation, your challenge is to figure out what's real and what's fake. Yeah, and I, and I think, I mean, thank you guys for also being here and teaching us. And I think just like you mentioned that we stay busy on our phones, um, maybe the key for us millennials is finding courses that we can do on our phones and apps, just like you started off with your accounting course. Right. Or, I mean, we offer the cash flow game online on the app. So I think it's just a great learning tool to be when you are busy, yeah just log into an app and start your, your financial career through there. And, and what happens if you, you, know, you go buy a silver coin today, it's gonna cost you about 20 US dollars. Yeah. Um, just by, you know, even if I pay $10, if I pay $20, mm -hmm. all of a sudden I'm gonna go, wow, I wonder what to, what's silver doing today? And you go online, all of a sudden articles about silver will pop up, you're gonna get interested. Yeah. So I'm a big believer in putting some money into the game. Get some money in there because if I put money in, my interest is gonna go way up. Mm -hmm. And Just, so will my education. Yeah. And I think I, I, it's very powerful. And I think um, it's just finding a way of doing it and finding a way, paying that price to increase your financial intelligence. And it's, I mean, it's amazing how one little coin can take you so far. So now you know what to do with your next paycheck. Start looking for assets to pay for your liabilities. And remember, start small, stay in the game, and stay busy. If you decide to change how you stay busy, give this video a thumbs up, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and comment below. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.